This video will cover the setup and acquisition of two COSY experiments. The first will be a, a basic COSY. The second will be a COSY acquired with uh, non-uniform sampling. The non-uniform sampling, or NUS, allows us to acquire the spectrum with uh, more resolution without necessarily increasing the acquisition time. We're going to create data set that gives us the window here. We are then going to select a parameter set. When we click on that, we get a here a long list. We can click on that checkbox show recommended to get a, a shorter list, list of recommended parameter sets. And from that, we're going to select the COSY GPSW. This is a basic uh, gradient uh, COSY spectrum. After selecting that, we can then click OK, and then update the title to reflect the fact that we are now acquiring a COSY spectrum. If you've not already done so, you can go to the Acquire button and lock, tune, and uh, shim the sample. I will be Briefly going through that here, we're not going to watch the entirety of the uh, locking process or uh, shimming, but if you haven't removed the sample after acquiring the proton, of course you will have locked and uh, tuned shimmed on that one. It's not necessary to redo those, but if you have removed the sample and then reinserted it, you will have to redo the lock, tune, and shim. With the shimming tuning done, uh, we will then need to set up some of our parameters. The default is to have a fairly large spectral window. We're going to narrow that down. We can do so by clicking on the Set Limits uh, button. And when we click on that, it will tell us to select a 1D spectrum. And click OK or double click on the uh, spectrum that we're going to choose and we see the 1D spectrum we will then zoom in on the area of interest specifically the area where we have the peaks and once it's zoomed in at that point we will click OK and that will automatically set the uh, window, it will set the offset as well as the spectral range that we will be acquiring. And it shows this in the window. We can click close. And if we go to the parameter set, we'll be able to see that it has set those uh, particular parameters in that. So click on acquisition parameters. You can see the number of scans that it has set for the uh, F1 and F2. Uh, we can estimate the time that it's going to take to acquire this spectrum by clicking on this clock icon here. When we do, it tells us the uh, expected time for the experiment to run. If we think we have time, we can increase the number of increments, scans that we're doing in F1. Uh, this will give us an increase in resolution. We can always check the spectrum uh, part way through and then adjust that if we need to. So I'm increasing the number of uh, scans that we do for each increment, again checking the time. The Typically with a proton, one or two scans should be plenty unless it's very dilute. You might want to increase that more. If it's fairly concentrated, you probably will get a good spectrum with just one. Uh, we'll click the ProSol and then uh, set gain and go to actually acquire the spectrum. We're not going to watch for the entire acquisition. Uh, I will show part way through. We'll come back uh, and look at the status of the acquisition part way through to determine whether or not we want to continue with that. At this point, we can see in the window down here at the bottom of the screen that we've acquired around 30 scans so far. 
we can decide to process this the way we would just normally process the spectrum. Uh, we can click on the process button and the uh, computer will process the spectrum, show us the result in the spectrum window or the spectrum tab. And we can adjust the uh, height of the peaks with our mouse. We can do the same for the 1D traces by just clicking on each of those and then again adjust the height of the peaks and then deselect them uh, that will return control of the uh, the scroll mouse to resizing the peaks in the 2D spectrum. And we can decide that we want to continue. We just let it run more to in, uh, improve the uh, resolution of the spectrum that we uh, are acquiring. So you don't have to actually stop anything to uh, do this. So now we'll jump ahead. Again, you can see at this point we've acquired almost half of our uh, increments that we were going to do. We can check the processing. We can check our progress by processing the spectrum again. And we click the process button. Since we have already processed the spectrum once, we will see a little pop-up window telling us that we have processed data asking if we want to overwrite that. Click OK. It reprocesses the spectrum and we can again adjust the uh, height of the peaks with our scroll wheel. And you can see at this point that we have uh, significantly better resolution than we had before. The spectrum uh, does look better. And again, just the heights of the uh, two uh, 1D traces. This spectrum looks good enough, so we can halt the spectrum. Again, note that if we do, uh, click on the stop button, it stops the acquisition, but also does not save the <clears throat> data that we have collected. So we want to click the halt button. That stops the acquisition, but saves the data that we have. Do a final uh, processing since we did uh, acquire a few more uh, scans on this. And now we have the basic uh, cozy sp uh, spectrum. When you're adjusting the threshold, one thing you can look for are uh, cross peaks that don't line up with any of the peaks in the 1D trace. Uh, that is typically going to be noise and that uh, means we've got a threshold set a little high and we can always adjust it down a bit. Now that we've acquired the regular COSY, we're going to acquire the COSY with non-uniform sampling. We start the same way. We create a data set. We will still go with the COSY, the same one that we had before. Update our title to the fact that this is going to be with non-uniform sampling and click OK. We don't have to change anything else. We are going to start with the same cozy parameter set. Go to the acquisition parameters. Uh, we can see this set at 128 scans. Uh, we're going to change this to 1024. Number of scans is still going to be two, just as we had before. The spectral window is, again, default is too large, so we will go to Acquire and Set Limits. That will allow us then to change the spectral window. Again, we do it the same way, load up the 1D, expand, and click OK. Now if we go back to the acquisition parameters, we can see that it's changed the window. One thing we do need to do is change the FN type to uh, non-uniform sampling. Now we're going to scroll down to the uh, NUS, the NUS parameters, and set uh, that. The percentage we're going to set to 12 and a half. 
So we're going to only acquire one eighth of those 1024 increments that we set earlier. And you can see then we're actually acquiring just 128 uh, actual increments in the indirect dimension rather than all 1024. Something to note here is the acquisition time. The AQ in seconds for FN1, that's about a, a quarter of a second. Need to make note of that time because we will use that down again in the NUS parameters when we set the uh, T2 relaxation. We set it basically to be approximately equal to the acquisition time in the indirect dimension. We can estimate the time for this uh, experiment. We can see it's about 12 uh, minutes or so. We've already locked and shimmed uh, for the previous cozy, so at this point we can just do prosol and then tell the spectrum to start acquiring by clicking the go. We're not going to wait for the entire acquisition to proceed, so we'll just jump ahead uh, to when the acquisition is completed. So at this point, the acquisition is completed, so we're going to process the spectrum. When we do, we do get a pop-up message that we don't have a license. We click OK, and it will continue to process it anyway, it just doesn't use a special a NUS processing package that's available. You can see the processing here is uh, a bit time consuming, although not excessively so. Certainly, the it would take longer to acquire the extra increments. The processing is a little longer, but uh, we do pay a small price at the back end for a big savings at the front end for the acquisition. Now that it's done, we can close, click the spectrum window to view the spectrum that we have. Again, adjust the threshold or the peak size. We can see the spectrum that, we're, that we have. Uh, we are going to go to advanced here and do special transforms uh, to uh, do the, we're going to select Hilbert in F2. You can also type XHT2 in the command line to accomplish the same thing. And then we can reprocess the uh, spectrum. Again, it takes a little time, but again, this isn't very uh, significant. Again, set our threshold. Zoom in on the relevant area. You can see the two spectra here, I'm flipping back and forth between the normal cozy and the NUS cozy. Uh, we can see it better if we do an overlay. This is a picture of the overlay. The blue spectrum is the regular cozy. The red is the cozy acquired with non-uniform sampling. I did shift the NUS spectrum slightly to the right so that they're uh, peaks aren't overlapped. It makes it easier to see the difference. Uh, you'll notice we have a lot of the same uh, peaks. We do see a few extra in the 
Uh, NIST Spectrum uh, does seem to improve the, that as well. The big difference here is the resolution. Notice the blue peaks tend to be fairly wide, and we're talking specifically in the, uh, what is labeled as F1, the horizontal, or excuse me, the uh, vertical axis. Uh, the peaks there are wider. Uh, this is important when you are looking at peaks that are very close together or uh, overlapping somewhat. The narrower uh, peak width for the NUS, the greater resolution, can make it easier to distinguish uh, which peaks it, they line up with. So the NUS does provide a way of getting better resolution in an equal time or a shorter time than you would with the uh, regular COSY. And other than that, uh, you may actually get a few extra peaks in the uh, NUS because we are acquiring more uh, increments. That does improve the signal to noise a bit as well. Uh, and since we acquire a 1D proton before we do the COSY, the, you can look beforehand and decide whether or not you need that extra resolution and whether a NIS is warranted or whether the COSY will give you the uh, information that you need.